Uh, hi everyone, uh, and let's try to answer this question. What is really reactive power? And I will try to give two examples, one from real life to trying to make the concept easy to grasp. And then I will give another technical example from the power system so that we can physically uh, try to understand what is re, uh, the reactive uh, power. So, anyone who try to uh, Google what is reactive power, most likely you have seen this example where you have a cup, uh, you have a drink, let's say soda, and there is at the top there is foam here, and then there is the actual drink, and the foam is actually called the KVR, or this is resembles the the KVR, while the real drink is the, the KW, is the real power. Or sometimes it's given as a, a bag of chips where the kilowatt is the actual volume that has the chips, the air is the KVAR. Okay, now is this a good analogy or not? This is actually covers a bit of the meaning of reactive power. It gives us the understanding that the reactive power, actually, it has a negative impact on the system capacity. Uh, let, let's say this is there is a transmission line, okay? So the transmission line can allow certain amount of power to go through. So the KVR will be actually occupying some of the capacity. It will be used actually uh, in the in the system, which will uh, make the Cup or the system looks full, but in actual we are only transmitting this amount of real power in the in the system. So that explanation actually is correct, and it reflects some of the meaning of the reactive power. But I feel that this example is not doesn't really reflect the re reactive power from why we need the reactive power. It shows that the, the reactive power is only useless. It doesn't show the importance of reactive power. So I will try to add another example that shows that, okay, the reactive power can be useless, but it is also very, very important for the operation of the power system. So let's assume that there is a delivery guy that you want to deliver certain product. So the delivery guy at point A at the transmission point. And whatever you want to deliver is in the car. This is your real power that you want to de deliver. So this is your P that you want to take with you. So the guy go from point A to point P and deliver this real or this product to the customer the customer is happy, okay? Now, you cannot deliver the power or the product to the customer until you go through this distance, until you pay for the gas, until you consume energy and make the product available to the customers, okay? So you can look to the reactive power here is the amount of energy you consume to move from point A to point B. So it is useless by itself, as we will see in the other example, but it is needed, it is required. Now, one of the best examples I can give from the power system trying to explain reactive power is the following example. Imagine we have a transformer and we want to move the energy from point A to point B. To do that, we have to set the flux in the core. Without a flux in the core, you cannot transfer the energy from point A to point B. So the reactive power actually is the amount of flux, magnetic field, that you consume in the core of the transformer so that you can take the power from point A to point B. So the flux by itself, as we will see also in the next example, could be useless, but here it is needed to move the power from point A to point to point B. Now, let's go and give an example where reactive power can be useless. So this example, the same delivery guy, but he forgot to 
back whatever he wanted to talk to the customers. So he took the same trip from point A to point B. But there, oh, he remembered, I didn't bring anything to the customer. The customer was not happy. So you did not deliver the real power or the product as you are supposed to do. Okay. Still, you have exactly used the same amount of energy or gas. You have used the same amount of uh, time to go from point A to point B, but yet now you do not deliver anything. So now this same trip is considered as a waste because you did not deliver the, the power. And if I give a technical example, the same transformer example, imagine that the secondary side of the transformer is an open circuit. There is no load. So you energize the transformer. It's the same amount of flux there in the core, okay? but you are not delivering any power. So here, the reactive power is considered as a loss, as useless amount of power, because you are not delivering power from point A to point B. So in conclusion, reactive power by itself is useless. However, without the reactive power, you cannot transmit the real power. So it is really needed to set the flux and now you understand that the reactive power as a physical phenomena, it is converted to magnetic field. And this magnetic field is actually needed to be able to transfer the real power from one point to, to another.